much trepidation that Bryce, a former US Army Ranger, and myself slip into the dark, muddy waters a few miles offshore. The oxygen rebreathers we're using can be unforgiving. Diving in excess of 30 feet quickly leads to oxygen narcosis and death. Navigating underwater at night by compass only and with six inches of visibility challenges even the most experienced of Navy SEALs. And to top it off, massive crocodiles lurk in the mangroves nearby. What can possibly go wrong? 90 minutes later, we silently glide under the docks of Punta Reynas in Costa Rica. We surface and hide our DPVs and our military rebreathers, then swim slowly among suspected illegal shark finning vessels, being careful to remain hidden. Eventually, I climb onto one, and I place a satellite tracker on top of its masthead. We climb onto a second vessel and do the same. Dogs sensing our presence start barking incessantly, and the appearance of two armed guards on the dock sees Bryce and I beating a hasty retreat back into the safety of those dark, muddy waters. The mission was a success, but we had no idea of the crazy journey we were about to embark upon. The two vessels we now track were part of a much larger shark finning operation. Suspecting shark finning is one thing, but proving in a court of law quite another. Our hope was that by tracking them, we could learn when and where they were shark finning, catch them in the act, and then prosecute them. Both vessels soon leave port, but much to our surprise, they slide along the coastline. Sorry, much to our surprise, instead of sliding along the coastline where shark finning would normally occur, they head directly offshore. We start to think our intelligence is wrong. Three days later, we get the answer as both longliners descend on the Cocos Island Marine Reserve. Featured in the original Jurassic Park and described Jacques Cousteau as the most beautiful islands in the world, Cocos is the crown jewel amongst Costa Rica's marine protected areas. Sadly, it's also under increasing threat by shark finners and it would seem our two track vessels were part of this pillaging. We link up with a government unit and hatch a somewhat foolhardy plan to take our tiny little 25-foot sea legs amphib 300 nautical miles offshore to go and bust these shark finners. Our tiny vessel has limited fuel capacity, so we drag behind us a towable fuel bladder with gasoline sloshing inside it. The first half of the voyage is painless. Blue skies, flat seas, gentle breeze, crew is all happy, then things start going pear-shaped. Our military-grade fuel bladder leaks much of its precious cargo, leaving us with insufficient fuel to make it back to the mainland. We can maybe make it as far as Cocos Island, but there's now a serious question mark over water contamination. We continue on, and then one of the engines dies. We drop to a single motor, but that then too starts to fail from contaminated fuel. Our speed drops to a crawl in a last-ditch effort to preserve our struggling motor. As darkness descends, a front comes hurtling in and massive waves come crashing over our bow and spilling into our tiny boat. Seasick men lie vomiting on the floor and our very survival hangs in the balance. The bilge pump is running constantly and its failure would see us flooded and sunk. Constant spray renders our night vision goggles useless, making it impossible to navigate around these dangerous breaking waves. Our only option is to continue blindly into these angry seas, hoping our engine holds out, our fuel holds out, our bilge pump holds out, and no massive wave swamps us. In Māori legend, Tangaroa is the god of the sea. Sometimes he's generous to us. He provides us with food. He entertains us. He mesmerizes us with majesty and beauty. But sometimes he teaches us a lesson. And taking our little boat and fuel bladder so far offshore, we had disrespected Tangaroa, and in return, he gives us a hiding. The following day, and crawling along at three knots, five broken men arrived on Cocos Island. Our proposed voyage of 24 hours had morphed into a 72-hour nightmare, but we were alive, and we were extremely grateful for it. I'd like to think we've subsequently redeemed ourselves with Tangaroa, a few days later, and we caught seven boats shark finning illegally inside the Cocos Island Marine Protected Area. And in recent years, our team has caught and prosecuted countless boats fishing illegally. I'm not sure that Tangaroa has completely forgiven me yet, but these days I do treat him with a lot more respect. Thank you.